All right, thanks for staying with us on the challenges primarily that have um, that has informed the decision for CBN to redesign the Naira notes are significant hoarding of banknotes by members of the public, worsening shortage of clean and fit um, banknotes, increased ease and risk of counterfeiting to mention a few. Now, although global best practices <laughs> is for the central bank to redesign uh, produce and circulate new local legal tender every five to eight years. The Naira has not been redesigned in the last 20 years. If, like me, you're wondering why now, uh, um, and why is it such a pressing need, given that the state of the economy, we have so many things that are much more important, then <laughs> let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp, the rate one. A03 4663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Like in one second. <laughs> Wait Are you like wondering this, like Abby? me that what do you know? The, the last time they changed the money, I think they said they wanted it to be more durable, so they made it plastic laminated. Is that it? Is that so, it? well, they tried. It was better than what we had in the past. But now. Sure? It was. Because Something that will now turn transparent. You don't even know what You don't is. know what currency it is, <laughs> but at least they made an attempt at sorting that problem. Now, when I was younger, I used to go to Adrao, and we're right next to the mint. And they had explained to us that that's where they print money. As a child, I couldn't understand why they said there was no money in the country, if we could be printing it anyhow, anyhow. And in economics, they taught us that there's a certain limit to how much money that you can have in, circ in circulation at any point in time. The reason why this is baffling to student. me, sir. You're a good student. Oh, thank you, sir. And I learned that one in secondary school. The reason why this is baffling to me is that just like the Bank of America, where they say their citizens are actually bonded to the country, everybody sort of has a debt to pay. The people that want to print this money now are a business unto their own selves. So it's an advantage for them to print. It's not, it's not so much that they think we need new notes, because we're getting new notes. Mm. The same way we have issues with getting passports done, because passport pages are like mm -hmm. currency, like legal tender. If we can't get that sorted yet, why are we going to pump money into mm. printing notes? In my layman's understanding. Mm. Divo Okori, I do not have anything to say. <laughs> He's a public affairs analyst who constantly lends his voice on radio every morning on issues as it appears on the front pages of our dailies, and he's a friend of the house. Now, Abiodun Kerepe, managing director of um, AfriVest Consulting Limited, um, has he's been an avid commentator on the African market with over 15 years of professional experience in economics and investment research, business strategy, and investment advisory. He currently leads the consultancy practice of Afri, Afri Vest franchise, where he supports um, what's it called businesses with transformation and optimization strategies. Both of them have joined us live in studio because Uwa does not have anything to say about this topic. But thank you so much, guys. <laughs> We're just going to be adding oohs and ahs. Oohs and you and don't ahs. say. Eh? So let me let me continue, Divo, first of all, because you see this matter, eh? I don't get why it's like. Everybody, I mean, there are so many skits that have come on, on social media. I mean, there was one that William Suchemba did that just cracked me up so badly. He yes. said, they said the building is collapsing. He said, hey, no problem, paint the building, paint, just paint it. <laughs> he said, but I said the building is collapsing. He said, paint it, it now. Is. That if Nigeria can, can, um, can change currency when, can't economy, can't... when the economy is collapsing, I can paint my building and sell it. And I mean, it, it sounded funny, but that, this is how most Nigerians are seeing everything that is going on. So maybe you help us break it down. Why now? Why do we need to rebrand the Naira? Well, thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, we've been playing football in this country for some time now. <laughs> and uh, you have to be a good midfielder to understand that um, the connection between the goal and the defense is the middleman. Mm. And um, once again, we're at another opportunity of the more you see, the less you understand. Mm. Just like how they still are crude and we're not able to either make hay out of what is going on. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start with all the premises that, or the premise that the CBN gave. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, understand that CBN is within their rights and authority, okay, to carry out this tactic. It's 
under the monetary policy control or how they regulate uh, uh, cash flow mm -hmm. within the economy. And we have about, our economy is about 170 trillion, that's the GDP. Mm -hmm. Then the cash in circulation is about mm -hmm. 40 trillion. And the amounts that they're trying to mop up is about three trillion. And the first simple direct reason is um, there's a lot of cash that's out there that's not within the banking system. Mm. And they gave different, different reasons that mm -hmm. while they're trying to regulate the money supply, um, there's too much cash out there. Now, that action is usually like a form of um, control. Most times under the monetary policy, they raise interest rates mm -hmm. to reduce the capacity of, from banks to even individuals in spending, mm -hmm. right? Because when the interest rate is higher, uh, you tend to spend less, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, also they have some other activities called open market operations to mop up cash, etc. But in this instance, they're literally, this exercise helps to mop up cash because for, there are many Nigerians who you and I know um, beyond the usual reasons, they keep cash at home. Yeah. Yes, store it in. Yes, yeah. some people Make don't trust the system, so they keep mm -hmm. large hordes of cash at home. Mm -hmm. Now, um, they said that 85% of the cash out there is um, floating around and they want to bring that back. It's not mm -hmm. within the system. Now, these are all good reasons, right reasons. They also said that, oh, uh, to help their cashless policy, which they started years ago, even though they put it on slight hold, they've, they've, there's been an increase in the use of electronic channels mm -hmm. in moving money to the tune of almost 240 trillion naira, right? Mm -hmm. Then the POSs, the mobile money, etc. Mm -hmm. They also said that um, uh, to curb criminal activities with cash, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. One, money laundering. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're aware of how, as they still are crude, many estates are being built in Abuja. Mm -hmm. We can't hide it anymore. Uh, you know how anytime people tell you they've bought a house, the first question people ask is, where or not they see this money? Mm. I need to ask, where or not they see the money like to build all those estates in Abuja? Mm. Okay? It takes a lot of cash. Yeah. Now, we also understand that real estate is used for laundering money. So mm. money that's being stolen doesn't go direct to the banks. So people need to make a connection between mm. all those estates being built mm -hmm. and money that's leaving. Mm. So all this cash is out there in the system, kidnapping. It's also criminal. Yeah, yes. they won't collect and the they transfer. And they collect cash ransom. No, no kidnapper will take transfer. a check. transfer <laughs> <laughs> or a check. An open data right? He's not going to give an account to pay. <laughs> Two, terrorism financing. Mm. It also comes by cash. Mm. Four, counterfeiting. Mm. Well, I'm not. I, I, Which he said. I mean, from the from the communique, five hundred naira notes and one thousand naira yes. notes. Yes. Current currently there are so many counterfeits in the in circulation, circulation. according to what the CBN. Yeah, said. According to the CBN, even though you know some people ask who's counterfeiting the naira. Mm. Mm. One, two. I haven't come across counterfeited naira. In Never a the long while. Yes. In a long while. Yeah. Okay. Nevertheless, then also new notes. Hoarding. Mm. Yes. Whilst new notes have been in circulation, most of us can't get them because mm. they disappear at the banks and show up at parties. weddings, parties. Hey. To buy 50k, use yes. 10k to buy at a fee. At a fee. <laughs> at a fee. Yeah, so, wow. so who's you know? releasing mm. them? Now, the last one, which many felt that maybe this is the reason, is to curb vote buying. Mm. We're about approaching an election. We're aware EFCC, FIU, CBN, um, INEC, they're all aware that many people have stored up cash, the same way we saw it in Ekiti mm -hmm. and Oshun, to be able to bribe or induce voting mm -hmm. to their side. Mm -hmm. And they've been stockpiling across mm -hmm. the years for this event. So oh, the, wow. uh, the whole idea is that let's checkmate it by ensuring yes. that you can bring in your money. Mm -hmm. Now, that takes me to the last um, uh, reason, which was currency management. And this management has to do with... Um, uh, okay, the cost of production and distribution. Now, one of the things that most people are afraid of is that they believe that this three trillion that's out there, mm. that the CBN is going to swap, let's say I have a billion naira at home in mm. cash, mm. like that one they discovered in Koi, that was dollar. Mm. Some people have the same Thing. stash in mm. naira. Mm. So let's say um, the CBN comes up with this promise, yes, that I'm going to bring that my one billion out of the ground that I hid it and go to the bank and replace it with another, CBN is saying no. 
they're only going to replace like one third of that. Oh, yes. What will happen to the rest? <laughs> well, it let will me, be in the bank. Let me come so to because the other. They want it to come back to the bank hmm. instead of staying under your pillow. Hmm. So, in a way, this might be a good thing. It is. Because all these people are playing money for yeah, the But well, let me come to Abiyo. If you need my help, my account is available. <laughs> ah, like they, they will arrest you. It's a joke. <laughs> Don't joke like available. that. <laughs> <laughs> but Abiyo, let me come to you. I mean, Divo has said a lot, you know. But let me, let me, let me ask you. I mean, do you agree with Divo? And why... When we are asking why now, are we wrong to ask this? Because people are saying that there's a lot of priority in this country. Changing our nine note is not it's priority, not priority. At, priority at all. But hearing the vote now, huh, hmm. I'm looking at it that, yes, yeah, something might just be good out of this thing because, you know, some candidates are not giving shishi, but some hmm. candidates are ready to spend a lot of money. Yeah, but let me hear your thoughts on this. You so, know. I mean, basically, as it is uh, typical with policies generally, hmm. there is the positive and the negatives. And um, one needs to be able to have a very balanced view, balanced perspective. Um, if we look back in time, 2016, November, um, in India, we had similar um, developments where the Prime Minister basically decided to pull back all of the 1,500 rupees in mm -hmm. the system, um, all still giving similar reasons and excuses which um, the CBN has, has provided given, us yeah. today. Mm -hmm. um, huge, huge growth in, black, in the use of black money, and all of the other. And then you look at that policy and ask the question, what is the impact, what impact did they add? So first of all, there was on the side that were they able to actually curb down in the use of black money? Mm. No, no. If you track the numbers and the reports out there, you realize that really it was, was of no effect. It was of no effect in mm. terms of curbing black money because um, people got quite creative and while indeed, like he earlier mentioned, a lot of people use those money, put pump them into real estate, which had impact on prices. So mm. there was inflation. Inflation which began to rise. Which is what we're suffering now. Exactly. So in the context of Nigeria, um, for instance, already inflation at 20.8% is quite elevated already. So if we have a short window of about um, roughly two months to sort of begin to roll down on existing cash mm -hmm. or, or existing currencies mm -hmm. to replace a new currency. What does that mean for those who are falling into that window of st stocking or stockpiling cash mm -hmm. outside the banking system? He has reeled out those numbers. Um, the truth is the currency outside the banking system or the total currency in circulation is a significant fragment um, of the entire money in supply, if you're looking at M3, M3 as a measure. M3 is probably around 43 trillion naira. Total currency in circulation is just about 3.2 3 trillion, 3 like trillion yeah. there about. Um, what is outside the banking system is just about 2.7 trillion. It's, so you, you are so saying it's not the major amount, amount to it is not, It's not so huge for right? them to want Compared to Compared to this. the overall money in supply. So what then is the justification? But we'll be coming into that. Um, outside the fact that they were not able to really cop down black money, it had implication on average lives. Um, India, as a back then, the number of poor people relative to the overall population was mm. quite high. Mm. Um, the use of financial digital platform mobile money was quite low. Um, but then, um, after that policy, there had to be a bit of a sh significant rise in the use of digitalization and mobile money, mm. so that a lot of people were able to stay within um, the financial system. But then while that was happening, there was massive job cuts, there was job losses, there was unemployment, there was increase in poverty because people could not readily assess the new notes. Mm. Institutions, companies were rejecting the old notes. Mm. So there was basically a, big a standstill mm. in the lives of people. Now, are we likely to see that in Nigeria? Yep. Maybe not, because we have somewhat very impressive levels in terms of, of number yeah. of financially inclusive people. Mm -hmm. Roughly, maybe we have just about 38 million adults outside the financial or outside the financial inclusion bra bracket. Um, what does that mean? Um, in the rural area, that number might be higher of the 38, 38 million people within the rural area. Okay. It might be worse. Um, are these people able to assess these new notes mm -hmm. when it's begin to circulate? maybe at a very, very low rate. Mm. So w what is their fate? 
I think that's another question we can ask. Yeah. Um, on the flip side now, what are the gains? Okay, on th before I move into the gains, the ne negative, also you could look at it in terms of taxes, okay. right? So um, for the government, when you have so much money outside the banking system, right, it then means that there's a lot of economic activity happening outside your without financial your, system, without your knowing which you're control. not able to earn to, to, to tax revenue mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. right? So is there couldn't be any switch in that um, for Nigeria. Already, if you look at our tax numbers, we're doing quite well. Government is able to track um, companies' activity, but the real challenge is in the retail, the macro, small businesses, and the farmers out there, and you know the very small families that do small, small transactions. And in because and we, we t we're talking about 38 million people here. If you gross those numbers together, it's it probably come huge, out to something yeah, tangible also. Mm -hmm. So how is government able to leverage this policy to bring in those people within the financial system and then um, government can be able to sort of earn some type of tax revenue? Mm -hmm. I think those are, will be some of the positive, which there are, or of course, the questions the how, how hmm. behind it. On yeah. that note, let me take a break because <laughs> we are going to ask Welcome more to how this. when we come back from the break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. Um, before we went on the break, we're discussing the CBN Naira note rebranding, and we're asking why. And Devo and Abiodun have um, they quite expanded a lot of our thinking because you know some of the, some of these things you know we can't really understand it and place it, but I, I think it's beginning to make sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, um, Lady, you have a question. Yes, please come to me. <laughs> Devo, you may want to take it up after I've done this. The question I want to ask, recently somebody said on social media, how many of you really have 500,000 Naira in your account? I personally don't. And I'm supposed to be slightly more privileged than the average man in Nigeria, right? So if you I- You have us believe. Sorry, sir. You would have us believe. I'm telling you for a fact. <laughs> It's grace that we live on in this country. I'm slightly better to the grace of God than an average Nigerian. And I personally don't have mm. any time sitting in the accounts without purpose or use 500,000 Naira. Mm. Is it I'm gathering it for rent? I'm gathering it for something. It's not money that is just yeah. there for me to say I'm liquid. The people that have the volumes in their accounts whether it's wired money that really doesn't even have to be seen, mm -hmm. are the ones sitting down making this rule that we need to change currency. Mm -hmm. And they know that the deals that they tend to have, most of them, we never see money. It's wire, 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 wire transfers. Mm -hmm. The question now is, considering the fact that most Nigerians who are not the 1% of the 1% right. don't have this cash that they even want to change in their account, who do we really ask? Who came up with this? Because we will say CBN, but I want Colonel Jokoti. Yes. Now, the thing is, this brings us to the challenges of this policy, right? The yeah. implementation. And like you rightfully said, the bulk of Nigerians don't have all this cash. Mm. Now, there are eight denominations. It's only the top three that they're changing, the 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes. They're actually aiming, mm. like, let's say 80% of that three trillion mm. in circulation is being held by a few people. Mm. Those are the people the CBN is actually chasing. Okay, so yes, those are the ones. The 1%. And what they're telling those who don't really have all that cash is, don't be panicky. Mm. You have between the 15th of December uh, and uh, January, half, half uh, beginning of the year, mm. to exchange. So what that means is you can start now by just start depositing your money within the bank. So by, by the time it reaches um, the once the they deadline. start to release it, you get it easily. Mm. You're actually not the one they're targeting. Now, that, that takes us to the issues of this policy. One, with all this cash in circulation, right, um, if the bulk are those who keep money stored away, mm. those who have lots of money for whatever, um, for 48 trillion of cash in supply, 3 trillion is only 7%. So why the push? Mm. 
at, at why the short timing? Mm -hmm. That's question number one. <laughs> Two, um, you know that if I'm holding between 500,000 or even 500 million or a billion in cash, mm. will I want to go and drop it in the bank, knowing that the bank is not going to give me back same mm. in mint, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> And for whatever I'm assuming use, you even have it. Yes. And, and, and for what I want to use it for, since they're not going to give me back exactly what I put in, what would I do? If I'm smart, as most Nigerians, I would go and try and exchange it for dollar. So already within two days of this announcement, dollar moved from 750, that's in the black market, mm -hmm. to 760. And then today I heard it, it was floating between 770 and 785. Okay already simply because of this the policy. higher demand to and you know it. once there's a chase on the dollar it's direct inflation mm -hmm. to every other thing we import direct mm -hmm. inflation to everybody expecting to change and you know the airlines have been sitting and waiting it just means we're all going to spend more cash mm -hmm. you know what i want you to hold that thought because i'm mm -hmm. hearing the breaking news that federal government is disowning the mayfield over the plan to redesign the naira and i believe they have a video or something if we can yes, just the minister of finance with... oh okay I didn't know that. You should have said that. That's <laughs> 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 the topic. Okay, if you can play that. No, no, it just, it just took yes, it just it just happened. Yes, yeah. now because we can continue continue the topic. Yeah. So can we find that clip quickly? Uh, while they are trying to find the clip, please. Yes, it's, the politics it, is coming on board. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it, if if I hear you correctly, both of you, right? Mm -hmm. it, it seems like um, this is actually supposed to be targeted at a few people, mm. right? Okay, so let, let, let's hear the, the, the federal and government. Definitely. <laughs> We're not consulted. Uh, it was an announcement that we heard. And I've seen okay, you two, you just saw the press release like every other party. Part of the reasons that was advocated is that's one of the ways to mop up liquidity to manage inflation. But there are also consequences that we're also looking at what would the consequences be. There will be some benefits, but there will be some, some challenges. And I don't know whether the monetary authorities have actually looked very closely as what the consequences are and then how they can be mitigated. So I, I still advise that you have that discussion with the monetary authorities. Not as the fiscal authority. Yeah. First of all, as a fiscal authority, we were not aware of it. It was an announcement. And secondly, uh, I think that's one of the ways that they're trying to use to manage inflation. But there are consequences that also need to be considered and how to manage those consequences. Yes. You were not aware? You were not informed too? It's not a crime okay. to not be aware. Yeah. The CBN hasn't gone out of his way. You know. okay. They have an act that backs mm -hmm. the, the, It's within the past to mm -hmm. decide what happens they want to. to the value. Is it possible for the Both. CBN to act without the Federal Ministry of Finance? So, mm -hmm. the CBN re responds or reports to the presidency. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. So they can, no, they can so do things they, outside well, of the Ministry of Finance? I, I, I have a different view on that. Um, since 1990, Abacha's days, 1997, the CBN before was autonomous. Okay. But with Abacha's um, era, mm. he put a limit to their autonomy. So they're under the supervision of the Ministry of Finance, of finance yes. but. which is why her raising questions on this policy move mm. might put a hold, let me not say put a hold, but it's going to cause for there to be a review on it because this took place at a National Assembly review. Mm -hmm. And you, he you heard her say, you might want to ask the monetary authorities what is happening. Mm -hmm. And if those bodies from the Ministry of Finance and the National Assembly are not clear on, on, on this, what, okay. it might not move, they might not be, the, the CBN might not be able yeah, to activate to it as they wanted. If you remember during the days of Soludo, there was a time he wanted to redecimalize the Naira, mm -hmm. and he brought it. He was like, oh, look, this is what we're going to do. He had already announced it. It's a great idea. On the surface, immediately a, a spanner was thrown in the wheel mm -hmm. that the presidency had not approved. Mm -hmm. So even though this, in quotes, may have come for presidential approval, I think some people have been sidestepped. And okay. So, no, so, okay. So, 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 so it doesn't change the fact that CBN has the right mm -hmm. to make this policy announcement. Mm -hmm. It's just parallel to when they have the MPC committee 
and they decide they want to increase interest rate or reduce interest mm -hmm. rate, mm -hmm. they don't go to the NSA, NASS to request for permission mm -hmm. or to the Ministry of Finance to request for permission to either increase interest. After the policy imp you know, direction or implementation, you could have this kickback. You could have all of these commentaries coming in. Um, I wasn't aware. We were not consulted and all of that. Not it could, fact. depending on the pressure, where mm. it's coming from, mm. the circular already says he had been approved the, by the president. Exactly, the presidential approval. So basically, what that then means is we then need somebody who can go meet the presidency, convince the presidency that this, this is policy is totally wrong. Mm. And then the man can... Well, let's come, come back, back to both of you. And, 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 and I want to start with you, Abiodun. Do you think this would help our economy? So, Because given your case study of India, yes. it didn't do so well in India. So um, it didn't do so well in India because perhaps Nigeria and India now, in terms of certain metrics, we probably appear somewhat better placed, mm. right? India then financial inclusion was poor compared to Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. Financial inclusion is it's quite higher. Heavy, yeah. um, government's ability to track taxation and increase revenues from taxation compared to India then for today we're is better. better. Off. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. better off. So mm -hmm. basically, even just look at looking at those two parameters, yeah, yeah it seems okay, it might have some positive for the economy. Yeah. But if you now just box it within the bigger issues affecting the Nigerian economy, where we talk about debt sustainability issues, um, fiscal crises, poor revenue generation, foreign currency, um, um, volatility, and what have you, should this then be the best At this decision the best time. that we should mm -hmm. be so pursuing? Because now, time. I am hearing for you to print 30 million I mean, how much? Okay, so there well, is some, some numbers. Yes, I, I, saw, I saw a about. Mean, uh, yes, about, about there's a 30 50, million for, for one. 50 billion yes. to print about 1 point something trillion. Naira. Check my point. Right? Yeah, um, the, 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 <laughs> the value of printing is more than that was the value of printing. That was value what they call what it want to print. economic balance, senior mm. edge. Mm. In economics, it's called senior edge. So it just says that the cost of printing is a higher or lower than actually the value of the mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, the truth is, is that's yes, if you're looking is. at in situ in one day, the truth is it's stretched across time because that money will be in use for a long time. But again, mm -hmm. my point is, instead of investing that amount of money in something that isn't priority, who do we talk to about, like you said, someone needs to sit with the president. <laughs> I don't know if the heirs have been fixed. Who do we talk oh. to about, please let us channel this yeah, energy so, so it brings to us, this. It brings us back to where I would love us to be in the mm. sense that, one, like I said, once again, when we started, our, is our, our face is being pulled over with a wool. Mm -hmm. is someone taking us for granted. Mm -hmm. I want to hit, well, the National Assembly just started questioning today. Mm. Let's see how far that... Um, interrogation go, goes, yes. one. Two, there are too many things taking place uh, just before election, and we're not unaware of how during political season so many capital projects begin to come out. Mm. And we all know how that is in a bid to raise more financing more for mm -hmm. uh, politics in one way or the way. And this government hasn't given us too many reasons for us to trust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Already we're discussing how someone said there was a security um, uh, notification. Mm -hmm. Then another person says, no, no. don't really be bothered. Mm -hmm. Take it easy. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing people heading for the airports. Mm -hmm. What is really going on? And then some level of uh, security threats are discovered. Mm -hmm. Now, that is in this same vein also. Now, my question is this. Even if they go ahead with it, right? Because the, the, the motive is right. But we're looking at the timing. Mm -hmm. I hope and can we really trust government to ensure that the implementation is going to be seamless and smooth? In every instance that government has had to process one thing or the other for the Nigerian citizens, mm. Nigerians have suffered, e.g. NIN, mm. e.g. Passport passports, issuers, mm -hmm. e.g. Driver's, driver's license, e.g. SIM card Voters registration. Card. Voters card. I mean, we've all had to suffer. Or maybe because I didn't have money then. Because the only was on just time. We they did Nera notes, whatever. Now. Okay. I went to deposit my two cover that I had inside the account. <laughs> I didn't have problem. See, let me tell you something. Devote this money. 
from what you guys have explained, it's not we are not the attack. We're not the <laughs> they know who they know who they, they are, are of course. Us. And they know but they know themselves. <laughs> so I mean the fact is um they know who they're they after. Um and truly um they're after it's, themselves. <laughs> it's um the but question um, about time <laughs> is really important, yeah. right? Mm. Um, and if we can trust government, is really another thing. Already in that communicate, said something about um, um, banks will be served on a first can, first come first basis. Serve basis. Serve basis. Yes. So that already then says that would there even be enough or sufficient new currencies to go round to go round, mm. or we're going to have this um, um, Nigerian way of inconveniencing their citizens of this new currency. Mm. If that's going to be the case, then we're going we're heading into another quagmire. Uh, Quagmire. Let's take comments. Um, well, good we evening, my dear oh, beautiful sorry. sisters. Of what are you saying? <coughs> CBN Naira notes rebranding. Why now? I am not against the rebranding of the Naira notes, but it is proper. It ha um, but is it proper? It happens now. We have other problems that are more important to solve rather than Naira notes. We can tackle this later. Now, um, C dollar has raised risen from seven hundred and fifty-five Naira to almost. Um, 785 Naira, according to your guest. Please let us set our priorities right. I, re I rest my case for now. My name is Daniel Ilo, your Waze regular fan. Take your comments. Please. Okay, we have someone saying, wrong timing at this time. To me, the policy may be well-conceived one, but the timing going by realities on ground is very wrong, as the Naira may fall to as low as 1,000 Naira to a US dollar before January 31st, 2023. Bobby Kennedy, Jalingo, Taraba State. Also, somebody sent a message saying the CBN Act was changed on Dalbasonjo. The CBN is independent of the, of the finance ministry. It helps in stopping the payment of resume money. I don't know what he meant by it. It helps in money. stopping payment of resume. The English I is think. not clear. Uh, well, we don't understand English. But, but then again, like we said, they are targeting themselves. And because we're playing, no, <laughs> we all know this. We, we've been Nigerians for way too long not to understand how they play the game. We know politics. We know how they want to mop up your funds because the, where you are banking, the cash is not going to be available to them. Mm. Do you understand the logic? When they say the banks will get it on a first come, first serve basis. So if I am a candidate and I know that your bank that you've invested in or that you have a directorship is, is so, we won't make it available to you. So how are you going to bribe the people you want to buy votes from? They are playing a game of chess with one another. We are not involved. We don't have the money. <laughs> we are not involved. Let's leave. It didn't consign us. It didn't, it didn't really consign us. No, let's, leave, let's leave our guests to give us their final thoughts. Because we run out of time. Go ahead, Devon. It's early days. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give it time. Mm -hmm. The rabbit will be out of the hat very soon. Amen. Really? Is that all you want to say? Uh -uh. <laughs> Because for those of you who kept Naira and you're abroad, mm. you, have, you have some time to bring it back into the country and make sure it enters a Nigerian bank or else that your money will become tissue paper. Oh, Naira is the actual yes. legal tender yes. Naira. Naira outside the country. When we travel abroad and we say, oh, let me keep 50K yes. for when I come back, come back into the country. What is 50K? I'm just saying. Uh, they say governor, I will not mention the governor. Mm -hmm. I remember they, they travel with boxes of cash. Of course. Name and shame. Ah, now I'm on Dignit on that. It is Dignit to hit home. It will bring <laughs> them back. <laughs> Let me hear your final thoughts. Well, final thoughts. I think um, there are farmers on ground to catch the rabbit. Uh, if it comes out of the hat, you guys are like, that's good. You said it will come out of the hat, you said we will catch it. Okay. We'll catch it. Are you serious? Serious. Ah, uh, no, no, try. If he has a minute, please. But I, want you, to say, I, want well, I want to say something yeah. quickly because real estate, um, are you trying to say to me now that with the current situation, because I've heard the EFCC um, boss say that most of the industries now, real estate is one of the key industry for laundering money and all of that. Since they already know these things, and if this is one of the the motive behind this, why are they not just going directly, you know, to, to is it something that they cannot... Well, um, as some um, very, very honor renowned, amongst renowned journalists would say, the answer to that question is flying... In the wind. <laughs> in the wind. There is no honor amongst the, the truth. The truth is, real estate is, it's not just Nigeria, it's a global phenomenon. Mm. Um, there is no law against how much you sell your property mm. hence all money that bears no character <laughs> can find a home mm. in your one bedroom is that your coat or your I mansion like 
Okay, so I have a one bedroom apartment for you sale. You can sell it for two billion. It's going for two billion. Uh, hey, I have an account. Now you're for talking. It. I need it. <laughs> now you're talking. So I it's, have it's, bank I mean, accounts. It's a buyer and seller market. Mm. So it's it's based on purchasing powers and the perceived value from the. But asset. this is the thing that messes up so an economy. That is just. A bit, but that's actually what drives the economy. Ooh. Um, we are not part of um, this. When there's so much of regulation, they know for themselves. Prices, in terms of prices or supply. It has its downside, mm. and then when the demand also is also regulated, it has its downside. So basically, you let the natural forces of demand take and supply place. take its course, um, which is where we're also struggling with the CBN. And mm. when we talk about FX price, naira price to the dollar, CBN says it should be around four thirteen, four twenty. The market is saying no, it should be seven forty. So. Before we go, we are not thank you, Devo. Thank you, Abiodun. <laughs> By the way, they didn't plan the outfit. <laughs> I'm telling you. This is not black. This is deep. It's deep midnight blue, yeah. but it doesn't come it doesn't across it comes as that. It's it's that black. Black. Yeah. Just yeah. accept that. Yeah. I was even looking at the jacket. It was just the shirt I was looking at. So they didn't plan it. So we're going to take them out for dinner. And then and him are doing a go on the bottom left. Before we go, I show you follow us on all social media platforms at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quotes for the day, here it is again. There is no answer in the available literature to the question why a government monopoly of the provision of money is universally regarded as indispensable. It has defects of all monopolies. <laughs> I leave it to you to go and decipher. We'll see you guys live on Monday at 8 p.m. <laughs> as we bring another great conversation. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>